Welcome to Miracle Moment. This is the new mommy season that will absolutely rock your world, up-level your mama game, and skyrocket your business. I'm your host, Ray Ireland, and brand new mama. Like every new mama out there, I enjoyed those quiet, precious moments of those first few months. But after that, there was this stirring in my heart to lean back into business and activate my entrepreneurial brain. I went into a business partnership with a financially failing podcast production company and turned it into a multi six figure production house with over 65 million downloads in just a few months. It's been a roller coaster, and I've learned some unforgettable lessons. As a mompreneur, I know how challenging it can be to balance work, family, and self care and still see the everyday miracles. So each week, I'll share stories of women who have defied the odds to pursue their dreams of motherhood while also building successful businesses. This show will open your eyes so you can see the miracles around you. With more awareness, more miracles will show up. Light a fire in your soul, mamas. You deserve it. So are gender reveals and baby showers just a superficial fad? Do we need to buy all of the things that we see on Instagram ads for babies and new moms? These are some of the questions that came up, and I want to share some of the ways that we went through the pregnancy and the start of our parenthood journey and the things that we needed, the things that we got, the things that we did. And I'm going to be sharing from a place because we had so many people come up to both Sammy and I and say, wow, we just love the way that you guys have been celebrating the pregnancy and stepping into parenthood. A lot of people shared that they were so happy to be involved and that they had so much fun. And we found that we had a lot of community support. And I know this isn't everyone's story. So I wanted to share just exactly what we did to make the pregnancy and the pre-baby celebrations really fun and a huge success for not only us, but everyone. So welcome to another episode as we dive into this. I do feel like there are fads to pregnancy. You know, these trends that happen and whether that's the pregnancy fashion or just how you're celebrating the pregnancy. I think a big thing that I'm seeing right now are these crazy huge gender reveal parties and these wild posts and reels that are created based off of that. And in the beginning, it really made me question, like, what do I and Sammy want to create and what do we want to do and how do we want to celebrate? And am I genuinely feeling a desire to do a gender reveal or am I just feeling more like pressure coming from wanting to perform and create this whole thing and connect it to my social media? So We had a lot of talks about all of these pieces, and I think ultimately it's your pregnancy. So I have to start this whole episode off with don't worry about what others are thinking and do what feels best for you. I think there can be a lot of pressure, and you might hear me say that and be like, well, of course, but the pressure comes from people that you maybe wouldn't expect or in ways that you wouldn't expect. So from parents or best friends or sisters or brothers, people that you really respect and you want to please. So when it comes to that, you still have to just remember that this is your body, your journey, your baby, your pregnancy. And if someone wants you to have a shower or doesn't want you to and thinks it's lame, it really doesn't matter. Do you, boo, and (laughs) see who comes along for the ride. I think that was one of the most fascinating and fun things was to see who's going to join me in this journey as I step into being a mom. And I had heard stories that you might lose some friends and this and that. And we just really stayed open to we're going to do it our way and let's see who stays connected. And it was really fun and sometimes even surprising to see who really stepped up to the plate to be like, hey, I want to be involved in not just your life, but your family's life and your child's life. And to have a friend that says that or knows that and makes it known 
is really something so special and so supportive because as much as I love my friends for myself, it's really nice to just know that like my child is growing up with a community of adults and people around him and he can go to other people, not just me and Sammy, to have that type of support and to receive the lessons that you know he needs to receive as he grows. So that was super fun. There, I noticed when I was pregnant, there were some things that I saw online that actually really inspired me to try something new. And that was super fun. And then there was, of course, the other side of things that made me feel a little bit of pressure. So one thing I would say is as you're scrolling in the pregnancy world on social media, notice your body. Your body is such a good guide for what is inspiring that's usually going to feel opening. It's going to feel exciting. It might feel a little scary. That's okay. But it's going to be pulling you forward into the new version of who you're becoming. And then there's the other side where maybe you're feeling a little bit more like you have to do it. There's pressure. There's this inward energy or heaviness. And when you feel those things or Maybe it's more of a feeling of feeling left out. Just notice it and and see if you can take the time to have this internal check-in before you go into action of doing anything or creating anything or recording anything. And that was a really simple guide that I used during the pregnancy journey. And what was interesting is sometimes I would want to do something and be like, this feels fun and exciting. And then Sammy would be like, this doesn't feel great for me. And so that was something that we had to navigate because now it wasn't just me wanting to do something on my own, but really me and my family wanting to do or create something. So I also worked with Sammy and like checking in on those things too. And where is this coming from? And if one person really wants to do it and the other person really doesn't, you know, who gets the final decision? There were some things like, for instance, the watermelon challenge where you take a watermelon and you put syringe like plastic wrap around it on the dad so he can experience pregnancy. And that was something that I thought was so funny. Like it gave me so much joy to watch other couples reels on this. And I was so excited to do it with Sammy. And I thought we would both be laughing. And in the videos, like the woman and the man are laughing and it's pretty funny. And Sammy was like, no, I do not want to do that. I feel like you're just going to be making fun of me. And I remember just being like, wow, that's such a different perspective of it. I just thought we would be having a good time doing it. It's You want to really respect each other and be open to the possibilities of having a fun, fun time. I think social media is all about connecting. That's like the purest intention of it. So how can you really use anything that you're getting inspired by to just connect more with yourself, more with the people you love and more with people you love that aren't in your neighborhood and in your immediate sphere. So that was our navigation point. But one thing when it comes to the baby showers and gender reveals, things like that, I really noticed that some women plan everything out and really have it dialed. And I'll tell you, we did not. (laughs) We went one step at a time and really flew by the seat of our pants with the pregnancy. And I think a lot of people also experience that, especially with their first. And so it was last minute, I decided I actually wanted to do a gender reveal. And I'll share the story with you guys because it was hilarious what ended up happening. But Basically, my sister was in town. And so we decided to do the gender reveal, I think on a Thursday or a Friday, and we were going to do it on Sunday. It was very fast. So we put it together. I asked my sister if she would be down to help create some sort of fun game. And she was like, okay, I'm in. And what she ended up creating was a dart and balloon popping situation. And so I had invited 20 of our closest friends, we were going to go to the park and my sister was going to make this board of balloons filled with paint and the paint would be one, it was all gold. And then she had one balloon that was the paint of the gender. And we were so excited. And I remember waking up the morning 
of the gender reveal, Sammy and I were staying with my parents and my sister was in town too, staying with them. So it was just this really fun energy. Like everyone is just home back at the parents' house and we wake up and I just noticed that my sister's like grouchy and I'm like, okay, she must just be in a mood. All right, whatever. And then I'm just doing breakfast. I'm doing my own thing. Anyways, flash forward all the way to the gender reveal. We we see the board and it's all splattered with like blue and pink paint and there's the balloons. And it was so fun because Sammy and I, we threw, I threw the first start and on the first one, boom, blue got popped. So I was like, wait, that's it. <laughs> Did I just find out? And so we were having a boy, Rafa. And it was just so funny because it was just like this intuitive knowing and the dart just went right to where it was and we all celebrated and it was so fun and put blue paint on our faces, like the warrior paint. And it was just such a beautiful time. I think the whole thing lasted like an hour. We did a circle after we found out that it was a boy and where everyone circled around Sammy and I and just did blessings actually to the baby. So they like kneeled down in front of me and spoke into my belly little blessings and then of course shared some blessings with Sammy and I on our journey. And it was just so sweet and simple and perfect. And we got some recordings of it. One of one of our friends who's an amazing photographer was there. She took photos and it was just simple and sweet. Like that was all that we needed. It wasn't a big party. We didn't have food or anything. We were just in a public park for like an hour doing this. And the backstory is even funnier, though. We found out later that my sister had actually, as she was filling up the balloons and finished in the driveway, which the driveway is right outside of our kitchen. So you can see through the kitchen window. So while we were having breakfast, she was right out there. And I remember not wanting to look. I find out later on that she actually had just finished setting it all up. And then a big wind came and blew and knocked over the whole board. And so blue got everywhere, all over the driveway, all over the board and all over herself. Hey there, fabulous mamapreneurs. I've got something super special for you. Introducing Giggles and Growth, hilarious reflection prompts for the mamapreneur. So just picture this. You're journaling your way through prompts that have you giggling and reflecting like never before. Ever wondered what your business would say if it could talk? Or how about sharing the funniest thing your kids have ever said about your work? But here's the best part. These prompts aren't just about having a good laugh. They're an incredible investment in yourself and your journey as a mompreneur. Taking time for giggles and growth means giving yourself the gift of self-discovery, clarity, and personal growth. As you reflect on these entertaining prompts, you'll gain valuable insights into your business, your role as a mom and as an entrepreneur, and even find hidden gems of wisdom. And the cherry on top? It's absolutely free. No cost, no catch, just a joy-filled opportunity to embrace laughter while empowering yourself. So what are you waiting for? Unleash your laughter and embrace the growth with giggles and growth. Click the link in the show notes or visit www.rayireland.com slash giggles dash and dash growth to grab your copy now. Let's make your entrepreneurial journey even more fabulous. Get your giggles and growth freebie today, mamas. You deserve it. I later find out when I had ran into her in the morning, it was right after this had happened. So she actually had blue all over her. And that's why she had turned her back really quickly and just walked away and didn't say much. And so I find out that she was like, I had to do, figure out this whole game plan, hide everything, re-splatter paint, and put all these things on the driveway. So that way it looked like she was packing for like her camping trip, but it was actually just to cover the paint. And we were laughing so hard. She was like, that was so challenging. And what it taught all of us was just the pure fun that comes when something is just a little bit messy and that it's totally okay if something's not perfect. And I say this because the gender reveals on 
social media are just so perfectly timed and planned and videotaped and everyone looks amazing and the things pop at the right time and all that stuff. And you have to know that there's someone that's creating those and helping the parents create that type of surprise. And just to be okay with things might go wrong with that. And that's totally all right. Secondly, the thing that we learned from that was to really get our loved ones involved and to really choose like who do we want to be there to really celebrate the very beginning of our child's life and who's really going to be there to support us. And so we got to experience that in that circle where we really got to feel just loved and seen. And it wasn't all of our friends. It was just a small group of people who we thought would really appreciate this moment. Of course, we have other friends and we probably could have invited them, but we chose to keep it small and intimate. And it worked out with the last minute invites as well to see who could really show up immediately for our new family and who really wanted to be there. So that was the gender reveal. And then the baby shower was later on. And that did feel a little bit stressful. I remember thinking like, I want this to be fun for everyone. And someone had shared it with me. They were like, remember, this isn't for everyone else. This is actually a time for you and your family and to open to truly receiving support and gifts and all of that stuff. And I just remember Sammy and I talking about the gifts because it felt a little weird. And But it felt weird to ask and basically create this Christmas list of things. But we were like, well, we'll just put everything that we could think of on this list. And whatever we don't get, it's totally fine. We really had to release any expectations. But when they came, when the gifts came, when the friends came and showed up, it felt so supported. And it didn't matter whether they brought hand-me-downs or something new or whatever. It was really a beautiful time just to feel our community's love for us and our baby. And we got to feel all of the support before he came, which really was the best. The funniest part was that we got the guides, all of the men really involved in the baby shower. And that was really everyone's favorite part. The men got to really embrace their inner daddy qualities. <laughs> it was very, there's some very hilarious and fun games. And it was really like sexy and fun, I think, for all the women to see these men stepping in and playing around and just having a really good laugh all together. So we did some of the games we did at the baby shower were like smelling the poop in the diapers to figure out which chocolate bar it was. We did some guessing games around what everyone thought our baby would look like between Sammy and I, which characteristics he would have from the two of us. We did pregnant twister with a balloon under the shirt. We did a relay race. This was probably the most hilarious, most fun. A relay race where the men did all of the motherly things, racing each other. And they did it all with a balloon inside their shirt. So for instance, they like vacuumed. They had to run a vacuum from one side to the other. And then they had to pick up the squash baby with the pregnant belly and then answer the phone, go from one side to the other. And then all of these just hilarious things. And the guys really got so into it. It was so fun. And everyone shared. They were like, this is our favorite baby shower we've ever been to. And I think it really was because the men's involvement, the lightness of the party vibes, we didn't just sit around and and like talk, but everyone was really up and dancing. There was great music. It felt truly like a party and a celebration. And we really, we invited all of our friends to get more involved with the party, not just come to experience it, but come to participate in it and co-create it with us. And so we had friends that did everything. One friend came and took the photos. We had one lead some of the games. We had one friend lead the relay race and help us set up that and you know the rules for that. Let's see, we had some help set up the tables with beautiful flowers. We had a friend play some live music, a few songs on the guitar. 
and leading everyone in like a big group sing along. It was so much fun because everyone really did get to get involved. And my uncle Richard, he would always say he was an event sculptor is what he called himself, but he created all these different, amazing, very creative type events everywhere from corporate to just fun parties. He would always say growing up, he'd tell me the best way to party is to make sure that everyone has a job. That way they will feel like they're really throwing the best party themselves and they will just open up into this space of service. And if everyone is really there to be of service to one another, the quality of connection, the quality of experience just goes through the roof. I'm going to end with that, which is there's all these different fads. There's all these different ways that you can celebrate but choose the people that you really want to be involved with you and your baby's life. And this is their beginning. This is their start to connecting with your child's soul. So as the mom, we get to carry around this baby and feel that connection. As the dad, they get to be supporting you, supporting the mom, creating the foundation, helping set up the environment, and just really being there with you so they get that connection with the baby. Your other friends and family don't get to live with you every single day. So this is actually opportunities where you get to create that connection for them. So if you can think of it like that, I think that creates a really beautiful space for a deeper connection, deeper support, and true soul family coming together to celebrate and really welcome in the soul that is coming to the earth. So I hope you enjoy your journey, whether you are pregnant or maybe just listening to this, but know that you get to do it your way and take the time to get to know and hear and listen, what does my God or my higher power or whatever you feel connected to what do they want me to take effort in? Because as a pregnant woman, all of this stuff takes so much effort. But so choose wisely. What do I want to take effort in creating during this special time where my child is still in utero? So enjoy that. And I will see you on the next episode. Hey, mamas. That's a wrap for another epic episode on Miracle Moment, the new mommy season. Catch me on the internet at Ray Ireland sharing this wild mompreneur life. And don't forget to check out www.rayireland.com slash freebies for all the resources and support while building your soul aligned business. Are you feeling the miracles coming your way? Stay blessed, ride this miracle vibe all day long, and remember it's all about the journey. Catch you on the next episode.